Welcome back to the Blazer Victory Podcast, episode number 62. This is John Duncan, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host Steve Irvine. And Steve, we've got a really big game uh, this Saturday afternoon down in uh, San Antonio, and I got a feeling we might have uh, more than uh, UAB fans listening to this episode. We might have some uh, Roadrunner fans and maybe just some Conference USA fans in general uh, checking out our uh, preview for this game, because it's a it's a huge game with big implications this Saturday. Oh yeah, I mean this is this is it, man. I mean this is the, uh, you know, and for all intents and purposes, certainly the West Championship, West Division Championship, and you know if if your UAB is fortunate enough to win it, they'll still have some work to do against uh, you know UTEP to to get in the championship game. But um, you know, really, this is the championship game and uh, or the the West Division Championship game. So. You know, let's go play it. Let's go have some fun. And, uh, you know, that, you know, that's what we've talked about all along is, is, um, you know, just getting there to this point and having a chance. Cause you know, you could look you know, before the season started, you could look ahead and say, you know, chances are pretty good now. You never know, but chances are pretty good that this is going to be a championship game, a division championship game. And now we made it there. So, uh, you know, let's go, let's go play it. And, you know, like I say, have some fun. Definitely. And, you know, like you've been saying, Steve, I mean, it's another playoff game. This is what the semifinal yeah. game now. So, yeah, hey. I mean, basically is what's what it is. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, we're, we're trying out the, uh, the, the playoff system for the, uh, for, yeah, for college <laughs> the football. There you yeah, go. For, yeah. For FBS. So we're giving that a shot here, but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, these have been must win games, you know, certainly after, you know, you lost your mulligan when you, um, you know, you know, when you lost to rice, and um, yeah. so it's it's just been a um, you know must win have to win uh, situation or or you know you don't have a chance at, the, at you know winning the division for the fourth straight year so you know um, that, you know I really admire the way they've stepped up you know and and uh, you know put, done what it's take take to win and you know again we we've, we've talked a lot this year and and really talked after that after, you know after the Marshall win about. You know, nitpicking and boy, we should have done this and we should have done that. And why didn't we do this? And, uh, you know, I mean, what's important is whatever that fi- whatever the final scoreboard says. And uh, if you tell me right now, uh, you know, UAB is going to win the game uh, on Saturday, but they're going to be out gained, you know, nine million to two. <laughs> I'm taking the win. I don't care. You know, I don't care what, right. you know, you know, um, you know, that's what's important. And, and that's what, you know, you, again, you know, and I understand, I mean, I understand the nitpick and I understand the, you know, the, you know, kind of worried about areas and different things, but uh, you know, what ultimately matters is whatever the final scoreboard says. And that's what's, uh, that's all that's going to matter on, um, you know, at the end of it on Saturday. Yeah, no doubt. And I know you mentioned earlier, you know, college football playoff rankings, you know, coming out fresh out of the rankings now, uh, UTSA ranked number 22 in the uh, latest uh, college football playoff poll. Uh, so it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, they're coming in 10-0, and 6-0 uh, and 0 Conference USA, ranked number 22 in the country. Uh, this game will be at 2.30 p.m. Central Time uh, kickoff. It'll be aired on – ESPN Plus, man, come on, man, I, I can't wait to get the hell out of this conference, man. This is a joke. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's that's certainly a um, that's certainly not a uh, not a strength of this conference right now. That you know, I mean, you hate it. I mean, because this should be a you know, the nation should be able to watch this game, and and you should be selling it, you know. And uh, but it, I mean, it didn't work out that way, and you know, uh, you know, again, that's another thing that. Yeah, it's it's you know it's good to move on and it's good to get you know hopefully you know uh, when I hopefully get a better <laughs> media deal, uh, you know so people can can see you and that type of thing. But 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 uh, on Saturday, you know once that thing's kicked off, you know again that doesn't matter. I mean it yeah. matters for the people who can't be there and want to watch <laughs> right. the game. Don't don't get me wrong, that does matter. Yeah. But you know as far as the teams go, it no. you know it, it's it's just they got to go play. You know and and um, and and yeah, I, I hate it. You know I mean I, you know I hate it. But yeah. that that this isn't you know um, getting a lot of more a lot more eyes on it because it's going to be a great game. These are two great teams now. I mean, these are two teams. I mean, I absolutely love UTSA's team. I mean, you know, they're they've got everything that you that that you want out of it for you know out of a team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and I love what UAB. You know, I love UAB's team. I mean, you know, I, love, I just I love the way UAB. You know, this you know this year it's it's been uh, you know things going pretty well. 
you know, health wise and that type of thing for UTSA and, um, you know, and it's UAB fighting through all that kind of adversity where, you know, mm-hmm. where last year it was, you know, it was the opposite, you know, uh, UTSA had some you know bad injury deals with, especially with their quarterbacks and, um, you know, and they fought. And, uh, so it's a little, you know, kind of turn to turn around this year a little bit, but, um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, you know, two really good football teams and it's going to be a really good football game. I hope. Yeah. It'll be a championship game for sure. Um, in just a few minutes too, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and roll our uh, interview in a few minutes that I had with Jared Kalmus um, of the Alamo Dome audible. Um, you know, Jared does a great job. He's a good friend of mine, does a great job covering UTSA. He's been covering UTSA for years. Uh, he's also the uh, conference USA uh, editor for the underdog dynasty um, on SB nation. Um, so like I said, in a little bit, I wrote that interview that I had with Jared, but Jared, thanks again for coming on. Um, but Steve, uh, another thing about this game that I know you'll appreciate, and I'm, I'm sure Trey Raglan will appreciate as well is you ain't got to worry about cold weather in the Alamo Dome. Uh, this Saturday. It'll be 76, <laughs> 75 degrees. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no rain concerns, no cold weather. Uh, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be, uh, you know, it'd be like, um, you know, uh, postcard weather, I guess. And, and, uh, <laughs> so yeah, and, you know, I tell you what, I know what you are going to have to worry about is, is, is noise. I mean, that oh. place is, cause it's like, it really is. And, you know, coach mentioned this in his, uh, his press conference today is it's loud when there's nobody in there, you know, yeah. when there's, you know, when there's v- very few people in there, it's it really, cause you know, they play the music really loud and it just mm-hmm. holds noise. And, you know, when, when they get the crowd or whatever they're going to get in there on, on Saturday, 30,000, 35, whatever it may be, um, it's going to be loud, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and that's, that's some that UAB is going to a have to deal with, you know, which, you know, it's not going to be louder in Georgia. No. Um, now it's going to be louder more consistently in Georgia because, uh, you know, Georgia fans were gone by halftime and, and, <laughs> yeah. and were bored by, you know, the end of the first quarter and, you know, not being as loud but you know but you have experienced that you know you have experienced the the loud stadium but you know this is going to be loud throughout and uh so it's you know that's going to be something uab has to has to deal with and and, you know what they can't do is um fall into a lot of uh you know false starts and 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 just different things uh you know different you know pre-snap mistakes because of the noise they're gonna have to deal deal with that well because you can't you know, with this team, you can't, you know, you can't just keep penalizing yourself over and over, uh, you know, even the five yard variety and, and expect to have success. So right. that's a big deal. That's going to be a big deal on Saturday, but you know, you know, there's ways to, to counter that. And there's, you know, Hey, get off to a fast start and don't ever look back. And, and, you know, that takes a crowd out of it. So, you know, Definitely. I'm not saying that will happen or, but, uh, you know, it certainly is a hope, you know, that that, that happens and, and, you know, they're, they're a plan, you know, that, that to try to make that happen. So, um, you know, it'll be, but it'll be, uh, it'll be fun now. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things about this that I'm looking forward to. Um, and, uh, so I wish it was Saturday right now to be honest with you. <laughs> I know. Right. Go ahead and kick it off now. But, I, but I'm glad you mentioned that Steve. Um, cause I mean, I mean, let's face it, you know, UAB as a team this year has struggled with penalties. I mean, you know, honestly, we're, you know, at the top of the nation for, uh, most penalties in the game so this is going to be a tough test and I found it really interesting that you know coach Clark and his coaches show said that you know they were able to speak to the uh, Southern Miss coaching staff that just played at the Alamo Dome this past weekend and the coaching staff said that it was actually louder in the Alamo Dome than compared to Bryant Denny and Tuscaloosa and I, I found that really uh you know just just a heck of a statement to make, but I mean, but in a way it makes sense though, because you just mentioned too, you know, they pipe up the music really loud. And, and when you've got a dome uh, stadium, you know, the, the noise is just ricocheting off of the building. It's not, you know, just going into the open air, like in a regular outdoor stadium. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a big test. And I, and I know, you know, the, the people in San Antonio, they're rallying behind this program under Jeff trailer this year. So I know, the Alamo Dome is going to be rocking. Um, I expect 35,000, shoot, maybe even 40,000 uh, this week. Um, because, I mean, another thing is you can't just sit at home and watch it on TV because it's, it's not on TV. It's going to be streamed. So that's just more, uh, 
more of a uh, you know urgency for people to get to the stadium and i wish that i could make the trip to san antonio unfortunately i can't i know you'll be there and i know some blazer fans that are going there to making the trip to san antonio and you know and i've heard and steve you've been there correct me if i'm wrong but i've heard san antonio is a fun place to go oh it's wonderful i mean I, that's one of my favorite <laughs> trips you know in this conference and it's uh you know there, there's you know there's you know if you like touristy stuff there's the river walk you know and right and, and then, hey, go, you know, going to the Alamo is tremendous for, you know, if you've never been. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed, you know, going to see and see that. I don't, you know, I don't go every time we go, but I did, you know, I have been and, and, you know, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good things to see, you know, a lot of good food. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good place. I mean, there's nothing, you know, nothing I can say bad about San Antonio. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tremendous place. And, it's a great game to go to. And, you know, kind of going back to crowd noise a little bit, you know, it, the difference I think we're going to have in this one is, is, you know, the Southern Miss coach is talking about, you know, Brian Denny not being as loud. Well, I mean, it's not going to be as loud for the Southern Miss versus Alabama. Yeah, you, know, but, yeah. you know, so so I think that's the difference is you're going to have um, not only is it going to be loud on Saturday, but these fans are going to be keyed up now. I mean, because they know mm-hmm. this is a championship game. And I think there's a different level of noise. I mean, you know, kind of like, kind of like I talked about with the Georgia UAB game, you mm-hmm. know, it was, it was loud to kick off and early. Uh, but you know, then again, they got a little bored, you know, and, and, and just didn't, it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't, they weren't that keyed up after they, you know, got the huge lead. So this thing is a championship game and that takes it to another level. It you does. Know? And, and, and honestly last week wasn't a championship game with Southern Miss there. But they couldn't get to the championship game if well they could, but I mean you know they they couldn't stay they couldn't remain unbeaten if they don't win that game, so they were keyed up, you know what I mean yeah. I, so I think there's a there's a big difference in a in a in a big game crowd than a buy game crowd that uh that where they're just beating the heck out of the other team, so you know uh I do expect it to be loud and and i mean and and you're right, I mean all those other things i mean it it holds noise. Um, mm-hmm. you know, again, they, they play that music loud now. I mean, they, they don't, <laughs> uh, they don't mess around. Right. And, um, uh, so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's other factors, but, you know, to me, the biggest factor of, of, of the noise problem, uh, or, or issue, I guess on, on Saturday is the fact that it's a big game. It's big game noise, you know, championship right. game noise. And that's a whole different thing. Right. Well, let's go ahead and look at this uh, this uh, 2021 Roadrunner football team. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, 10 and 0, ranked number 22 in the country. Jeff Trailer doing great things. Uh, it, it seems that the offense is just light years better than what we saw at Legion Field last year with this Roadrunner team. And in fact, I don't know if Blazer fans have realized this, but you know, Frank Harris, their quarterback, this is going to be UAB's first time facing off against Frank Harris because you know he's been hurt. The last couple of years when it came time for the UAB UTSA game and Steve, he, he makes me so nervous because I mean, he's so, he's a dual threat guy, but he can throw the ball. I mean, 20 touchdowns on to five interceptions, um, you know, thrown for over 2,300 yards already. Um, just, I don't know. I mean, he's not as good as Malik Willis that we saw earlier um, in the season, but man, this guy just pops when you look at the film. Yeah, I mean, and that's the difference in the offense between you know when we saw him last year and when we see him right now. I mean, they yeah. you know they they had problems at quarterback because of injuries, not because of any, you no, know, yeah. you know, but uh, but they had the same offense. They just didn't have the guy. They didn't have Frank Harris at quarterback, and, right. and that's the big difference. And and uh, yeah, it'd be the first time. And you know I, what I like about him is he 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 can do it all. I mean, he's the kind of guy that obviously he can beat you with his feet, you know, in a hurry. Uh, he can beat you in a, with his arm in a hurry. He can scramble to buy time, and he can scramble to get yards. And you know, and that's that's hard. I mean, because a lot of times you'll have a guy, and Malik Willis was a lot like this, but a lot of times, uh, like like Frank Harris in that sense. But a lot of times you have a guy that you know scrambles to to try to get up guys open. You know, mm-hmm. and and you know, it's not you know the the um, the two lane quarterback was like that. He bought time to try to throw the ball. So you knew when he was buying time that he probably wasn't going to run it, but not that he didn't have the ability to run it. Cause he did. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, he probably was looking to, to, um, you know, to, to just kind of extend the play and, and, you know, find a receiver. And then there's other guys, you know, kind of like Levi Lewis a little bit last year for, for, uh, 
Louisiana uh, for fan. Louisiana. You know, a lot of times when he when he was uh, when he would scramble, he was gone. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't he, he didn't really spend a lot of time looking downfield. So you kind of knew that hey, if he's moving, we got to get there. Right. And so I think this guy is so good at at reading what he should do. You know, and I if he, if he feels like he needs to get out there out of there and get some yards, he's going to do it. And you better get there in a hurry. Um, but he also is very good and patient when he needs to be good and patient uh, of, of, you know, kind of, you know, waiting, you know, kind of buying time to get guys open, you know, and boy, he delivers it. I mean, he's got, he's got a strong arm. And mm-hmm. um, so he's, he's got, he's, he's, he's the whole package. I mean, he's, he's, he's fun to watch. Um, I, I really enjoy what he's doing this year because, you know, here's a guy who's has had a lot of injury. You know, he's, he's tore up both knees in his college career and, and you know, for, really till this year was kind of snake bit a little bit with injuries. Yeah. So I think it's really neat to see that, uh, him have a year where he's healthy and gets to play because, because he's fun to watch and uh, you know, and, and I just, I just think, I mean, I'm glad good things are happening for him, you know? So, um, you know, that's the good thing. Yeah, no doubt. And he's also got some guys that he can throw the ball to that are some playmakers. I mean, you look at, I mean, Zachary Franklin, uh, Cif- Josh, Josh Cephas, I mean, both of those guys, and Clark also, I mean, really all three of those guys, I mean, they, especially the first two, Franklin and Cephas, they really might have a shot at playing at the next level because, I mean, those guys have to be, you know, the top guys um, really in the group of five, to be honest. You look at Franklin, I mean, eight touchdowns already, 750 yards. Cephas close behind him with 682 yards and six touchdowns, just – both studs. Yeah, it's, you know, speed, strong, you know, pretty good size. You know, one Seif is you know, a little better size, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and Clark too. I mean, you know, they, those guys are they're the real deal. You know, and they have some other guys, some some role guys too that are, that are, that'll hurt you a little bit, and uh, you know. But hey, I mean, we talk all this. We've talked a long time, and we hadn't said the name since Sir McCormick yet. And I uh, know I was just thinking and, that, <laughs> and that's where it, that, and that's where it starts. I mean, yes. that, that 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 guy is so good. You know, he's so good, and he's so just, uh, you know, steady. And and uh, you know, he's he's gonna break. You know, he's gonna break one. You know, several on you. You know, mm-hmm. and and he's, um, you know, he, he doesn't make mistakes. You know, he can get in the passing game if you need him in the passing game, and he's just. Um, you know, a competitor and, and, you know, he's, he's where it starts, you know, and, and that, that's the thing. you got all this other stuff around him and, um, you know, and, and, and he just, he's, he's a straw, you know, I mean, he's a guy, you know, and, and, uh, he's the one that you're going to, you know, you're going to have to limit, you're not going to stop him. No, I mean, you know, but, but you're going to have to limit his, his, his big plays and, you know, stop him when you can. And, you know, you're going to have to get a lot of guys to the football. You can't, you know, you're not going to, you know, be content with having one guy try and tackle him because it's, you know, probably not going to happen. But in that sense, you also are going to have to tackle well. You know, mm-hmm. that's a big key. That's a big key. That's a big key with those receivers because, you know, they make guys miss now and or they'll run through them. And so you're going to have to tackle well and, and you're going to have to, um, you know, get a lot of guys to the football. And that's with all these guys, you know. Right. That's with Frank Harris. That's with Sincere McCormick. Uh, you know, I hope to heck that uh, Sincere McCormick realizes he's a NFL running back and gets the heck out of there after this year. But uh, <laughs> please, yeah, you know, I'm tired tired of watching that guy. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I mean, actually, I'm not tired of watching because I really enjoy watching him. But I'm you know tired of playing just not against him. us. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, um, you know, they they're good and they're good up front. You know, they they um, there's just you know you just sort of hold your breath every time they have the ball. You know, and that was you know you look at that. You just go back and watch. I was watching that uh, earlier today. I was watching that um, Western Kentucky game. And, you oh, know, and I, what a I, fun I, game. Yeah. yeah, and I watched a lot of it live, but I just went back and watched it today. And, you know, just hold your breath, man. I mean, those guys yeah. are making play after play, you know. And, and, and then their defense was a lot better than they played that night. But, you know, but you, know, you just don't see what Western Kentucky does too often. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, you, almost have, you almost have to just – getting the shootout and outscore them in, in, you know, it, it seems like, but, uh, and that could be, a, you know, hopefully that's another problem for another day because, uh, if it is, that means you're in the championship game, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, but right now, but, you know, I mean, I just think that, you know, they, they literally 
you know, UTSA can score on every series. You just can so they got to play well. UAB's got to play well. They got to find a way to make them make them some mistakes, which you know is not real easy to do. They made some last week. You know, they made some last week, and that's why that's part of the reason they were in, in you know, in a game with a with a not very good Southern Miss. Team. Well, heck, with a really <laughs> you know not, a bad yeah a, a bad at, at, at this point. I mean, at this yeah. point with the injuries and I mean, right. when you've got you know. You're down to your eighth quarterback, and you're and, and and he's not even a quarterback, or actually the two guys that played aren't even quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I will say this: I'm a voter for the uh, player of the week, uh, and, and this is kind of off the subject, but I'm I'm one of the voters for the conference USA player of the week, and yeah, um, and and I have a deal where when I vote, I I very very rarely vote for a guy on a team who lost you know he, it has to be something you know just crazy hey but frank um, gore man <laughs> yeah but i voted for frank gore this week you know because i thought you know for him to be called on to do what he did and now he didn't win and i didn't expect him to win um but you know for him to be to be called on to do what you know and um uh, <laughs> what he had to do and and you know they didn't win but you know um, but I voted, of course, that's also subject. I just thought I'd bring that up, but, uh, no, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I think they made a couple mistakes, you know, uh, UTSA did and, and, you know, and, and, you know, helped, you know, well, they threw a pick six. So there's a big mistake. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, and it helped them stay in the game. Uh, so, you know, it'd be nice to have a little bit of that, um, uh, you know, a little bit of that to, uh, a little bit of help, you know, but, but, you know, you go out and make your help too. So, you know, I think UAB is going to have to go out. You have to make some plays, you know, and, and, and I, you know, I think that UAB is going to have to find a way to, to pressure Frank Harris. And, yes. um, but they're also going to have to win their pressure and going to have to make sure they're in their, their pass lanes and, and, you know, not giving them the edge. And, and, you know, I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta be really careful with how you come after him. Because he can mm-hmm. get out of there in a hurry, you know, kind of the same thing with Malik Willis. I mean, you just have to be careful with it. Uh, but the difference is, you know, they did a great job against Malik Willis getting there. Just they couldn't just, tackle they him. Just didn't feel him. Yeah, so you can't have that same thing happen. And this guy's the same thing. This guy's he's not as big as Malik Willis, but he's but not he, small. Yeah. But he's strong. Yeah, I mean, he's big. Oh yeah, he's good size. I mean, he, but you know, Malik Willis is. 225 230 yeah he's a man. <laughs> yeah you know this guy's 200 which but he's still yeah. strong but but i All mean right. you got you got to tackle him you know you, you can't just get there um you got to tackle him and so right. so that's going to be key you know there, i mean there's so many keys in this and, and you know most of the keys are really ba- basic keys you know i mean what week uh, i don't care who you're playing you can play savannah state um <laughs> and tackling is still a, a you know it's, it's still a big thing Right. Yeah, that's and, just I mean, a basic, you know. And, and I feel like, you know, we said the same thing last week, Steve. But honestly, I think this game right here is also going to be won or lost on the line of scrimmage because the oh, line yeah. of scrimmage, I mean, it's just, and, and I know you can, you know, and I was texting with Jared earlier in the week. Like, you can say that, I guess, literally for every game you play. But I mean, this game, like, it's true. <laughs> like, we've yeah, got yeah, to absolutely. stop McCormick and we've got to get to Harris. And on the other side of the ball, we've got to get McBride going. I mean, it's right. It sounds simple, but it's true. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, I absolutely, I totally agree. I mean, you know, that that's that's where it's, you won and lost. And, and you know, and I, I like the fact that that UAB basically builds their team around that fact right there. That to win football games, we got to be good up front. You know, and, and I mean, consciously builds their team with that. Now, I don't know that everybody does. I mean, even though it is such a big deal, I mean, it is. But, I mean, they consciously build them like we've got to we've got to whip you up front, you know, and yeah. uh, certainly in championship games especially, in the, which, you know, obviously this is. So, um, yeah, that's going to be huge. I mean, if, if uh, you know, if, if they go, go out and do that and, uh, you know, now it, it's a – you know, not a completely healthy front on both sides, uh, but but I think they're healthier than uh, you know than they were a week ago and two weeks ago. And I mean, I think they get healthier with each week. So, um, you know, I, I mean, but I don't think you know, I don't think we'll see Sidney Wells on offense. I mean, he could. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he's been dressing out, but I think uh, you know, I think it just just you know, as far as you can tell from here, that um, you know, I think they'll probably stick with what they've been doing. 
Um, yeah. you know, hopefully Will Riker will be able to play, uh, you know, hopefully he's, you know, another week. I don't think, I mean, I think they'll start with what they had, with what they did last week, you know, with, uh, uh Andrew Smith at center and Jacoby Jones and, and Tree Hearn and, and, and at the guards and then Colby Raglan and, and, uh, Telford at the tackles and, and, uh, you know, just go from there. Uh, but I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, and I think if they need Sidney Wells, he'd probably, he'd probably play could could play um but um you know at this point i think you you run with those guys that you've been running with and have done well um yeah. and so you know you do that and on the other side i think you know with alex Wright came back last week and it seemed like you know uh, isaiah forte came back last week and so it seems yeah, like you're pretty healthy too. there mm-hmm. fish was back yeah so it seems like you're pretty healthy there you know unless something else happened that we don't know of which uh, you know i don't think it did um uh, so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I kind of like, kind of like where, where you, where, you know, where you're at there and, you know, see what happens. And now I will say this, um, they're pretty darn good up front now. <laughs> I mean, Golly, I mean San Antonio, only giving up 80, 89 yards rushing per game. They're giving yeah. up. That is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yes, I mean, and they're big and strong and, and, you know, their linebackers are physical. And so that's going to be, that's going to be key, which, which means that, you know, you're not going to be able to just line up on these guys and run without any threat of a pass. So no. that's, you know, what we need again, you know, we need, uh, you know, Garrett Prince to make, you know, big plays. We need Shropshire to make big plays. Love that the fact that, that you got Ryan Davis now to, to be in there to make some big plays, you know, got to find ways to get, get the balls, you know, and ball in the, in the hands of, of Rajay Johnson Sanders, you know, and, and, and got to find ways to get the ball, you know, get more touches for TJ Jones. I mean, I think TJ Jones is kind of a, a little wild card in this thing. I mean, I think this is a guy with, he's, you know, starting to get comfortable and he's a guy with, uh, you know, almost running back skills, uh, at, 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 a, at a receiver spot. And, so, you know, they've had, they've had the, I guess, Luzan Tech, you know, put him in the backfield and got him the ball, uh, you know, for, a, for a play. And I think they did it once uh, against Marshall too. But I mean, I think he maybe try to find a, a way to get him a couple more touches because I think he's a guy that can some, some make some plays. And, 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 and I think there's some stuff, you know, I don't think they held anything, but I think there's some stuff that we haven't really seen with this, you know, with this offense that, um, that hopefully we'll see on, you know, Saturday. So, uh, uh, you know, just little wrinkles, you know, more than, than anything drastic. Uh, but I think you'll see, some, you know, a few little wrinkles here and there and see if they work. Definitely. And Hey, I'd like to see Jermaine Brown catch a couple more balls too. Cause I love to see that guy in the open field. Yeah. And they need to do, I think they need to do a, a, a more uh, concentrate, get to have more concentrated effort of doing that, you know I mean? Yeah. Because, because that's where he's at his best, you know? And um, so do that. And, and, and I mean, in the same sense, I think Lucius Stanley needs to get the ball on the edge. So, you know, some, I mean, yes. he's so great at that uh, little swing pass and, and cause he gets turned up in a hurry. And, mm-hmm. and so, uh, so, you know, maybe, you know, incorporate him a little bit more in, in that type of thing. And, you know, I mean, I think you pull out everything, you know, this week. Cause you're not, you're not holding anything back, and you, you know, you find different ways, and and um, because you're gonna need it. I mean, because this defense yeah. is too good just to, you know, just to line up and and, and do you know basic stuff. You know, I mean, they're too good, and so you, you're gonna have to do that. And you know, and that's that's gonna. It's hard because not only is this defense talented and big and all the things we've talked about, but they're so experienced and smart too. I mean, yeah, you know, you, know you got, you know, you got wisdom sitting back there at safety who's, you know, hmm. you know, perhaps the best safety in the conference, but he's also, you know, he's also probably as good, uh, as good of a thinker on the football field as anybody, you know, any defensive player in the, in the conference too, you know, not only is he talented, but he's, you know, so, you know, and then you got, you know, a lot of other guys are the same sort of the same sort of way on that defense. So, um, it, Hey, there's some huge challenges. So, you know, <laughs> you know, but, but, the thing I love about this UAB program right now is, is they are built. I mean, again, we talked about the built for like that, but, but they're, they, their big game championship game type uh, attitude and performance is just tremendous, you know? So yeah. there's nobody on, on that team that's going to come in wide eyed on Saturday. Nobody, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, they, they've been here, they've done that. 
They expected to be here even during the tough times. They expected to make the, you know, find a way to get here. And they did. So, you know, I think that's, a, I think that's a good thing. And that's a little advantage as, as talented as, as, as San Antonio is and as, as, you know, they're ranked and they're undefeated and all this stuff, you know, they haven't been in this spot. You know, right. And that, I was not, just about that, to say that. Yeah. yeah, and that's not that's not to say that they can't come out Saturday and look like the, the the team that's most comfortable in this spot. It could happen. It's happened before, but you don't know. I'm not going to say it. Um, no, you, you don't you, you don't know till you get there. You know, and right. so uh, so we'll see. You know, and and I I mean I I love their coaching staff. I love Jeff Trailer. I think he's you know he's going to have him. You know, I think he's going to be ready. But mm-hmm. until those lights come on in the game like this, you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, and I right. think I know what's going to happen. I think they're going to come out and play like an experienced team because they're that good. But I don't know, you know, and, right. and, and, and I really think that I, I, I know that UAB is going to come out and play a t- like a team that's comfortable. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to have win a game or, have, you know, even have a great game. But I know that they're going to play comfortable in this situation because they, they've been there and they've done that and they're comfortable in doing it. Right. Well, I definitely can't wait to uh, get to uh, this game Saturday afternoon, 2.30, as uh, UAB travels down to San Antonio to take on the number 22 ranked UTSA Roadrunners for the West Division. Um, and kickoff uh, for radio begins at 1.30 with pregame with Landon Roberts on uh, Jocks 94.5. So make sure you get your radios out if you can't make it out to the Alamo Dome. Um, and also, guys, um, I don't know if uh, anybody missed the coaches show with Coach Clark, but he actually uh, unveiled on his uh, coaches show that Mole is going to redshirt and will be back next year. So that's a really good sign uh, to uh, get Chris Mole back for, what, his 10th season? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, hey, yeah, and, and, and that's something that's been in the works for a few weeks, and yeah, you know, and he's gonna play linebacker. They're gonna, mm-hmm. you know, they've moved him back, and they, and they were getting ready to do that where they kind of had done it, or, you know, yeah. right before he got hurt. But uh, but he'll, you know, he'll be back because I, I think that it just showed that that's his natural it position, is. at least in co- in the college game. That doesn't that doesn't mean he can't play safety in the NFL now, uh, but in a college game, it was just where he he I think he fits better. And uh, so that's what they're they're gonna do. But it'd be great to have him back. I hate that he can't play this year. Yeah. Uh, because I think you know uh, you know he's a huge part of this team. But uh, you know he just had to find other ways. Same thing with TD Marshall, and you know same thing with with Sidney Wells. I mean you know, these guys that are not playing right now, or you know or out for the season for you know for good for the season, then they've had they've had to find different ways. And I think that's been a strength of this team too that. You know, everybody, uh, you know, kind of going back to the, you know, the Tyler Johnson, you know, speech that he gave after the, after the, uh, uh, Liberty game or right no rice. Game, rice yeah. yeah. The rice game where, uh, you know, where he, you know, he, he's lost his starting job, but you know, there was, a, you know, there was a need to say something and mm-hmm. he said it, you know, and he stepped up and said it, and that was the role, you know, that was role he played, you know, and, and, you know, not just to that, but that team's responded from that rice game. And, you know, so you've got to, that's what great teams do, man. You find no matter who you are, you find what your role is at that moment and you play that role. And if it's, if it has to be to motivate guys and you motivate guys, you know, and, you know, so uh, I think that's one thing that you've seen for this team. They, you know, guys are comfortably fit into their role. I mean, I, I mean, you look at a guy like Kyle Harrell, he's comfortably fit into his role and he makes big plays every game. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and, um, you know, Ryan Davis, I mean, you, you look at him, I mean, he's been hurt, you know, and, but when he gets a chance to get in, he completely fits in what he's supposed to do and, and has two huge catches last week. And then you just go down the, down the line of, of guys that have done that, you know, and, uh, and, and Hey, I mean, the bet for maybe the best example is that the, what those, those guys in the offensive line do, Yes, you know, they're, they're always moving They're you know, they're, they're going from this side to that side, um, you know, they're, they're going different positions. You know, you got, you got Jacoby Jones who, who in the middle of the game, they have to take that 80, 89 Jersey off of them, which is probably <laughs> about eight sizes too small, you know, and they're, and you know, those jerseys these days are so small anyway, cause you don't want mm-hmm. people grabbing onto, them, you know, and they got to get that thing off of him and, and get him into, you know, playing right guard instead of, uh, you know, playing that role. And, and so, but, I, but, you know, all these guys have done it, you know, and, and, um, and that's great. That's great to see. And, uh, yeah, that's how you win championships. That's right. And we'll see what happens this Saturday in the Alamo Dome. 
But guys, without further ado, I'll go ahead and roll my interview that I had with Jared Kalmus. But thank you guys so much, and we'll be back a couple of days after the uh, UTSA game to give you our recap. But as always, go Blazers. Well, welcome back to the Blazer Victory Podcast, where I am pleased to be joined by Jared Kalmus. Jared, you're a good friend of mine. You do a hell of a job on the Alamo Dome Audible with Adrian covering UTSA, and you also do a hell of a job on Underdog Dynasty as the Conference USA editor. How are you doing this evening, buddy? Hey, thanks, brother. I'm doing great. So excited for this game. It's so rare for a Conference USA midseason matchup to feel like it has this kind of like gravity and like aura to it. Like it's just I know. It's wild, you know? It's crazy. And I know we were just talking about, you know, with you with you guys um, on the Patreon show. Uh, I just can't believe this game is on ESPN Plus, man. You know, this mm, is the one sickening. opportunity for Conference USA to showcase themselves and here we are going to be behind a paywall on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, you know, if these teams were staying in Conference USA and I was in AAC school, I would be using this to negatively recruit to these two programs. You know what I mean? It, it's just really a shame. And these student athletes all deserve better. Definitely, definitely. Well, guys, you know, we got a big one here Saturday in the Alamo Dome, uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Time as UAB takes on the number 22 ranked UTSA Roadrunners. Jared, obviously UTSA off to one hell of a start, really hell of a season this year. Um, what what do you think's been the contributing factor to this 2021 season versus last year? I mean, I know last year, you know, to start the Jeff Trailer era um, in San Antonio, you know, had a great year. Um, but yeah. what do you what do you think just kind of catapulted them to the season they're having this year in 2021? Honestly, there's a lot of factors that I could go into. I'm gonna I'm gonna whittle it down to three things. Um, okay. First off, Jeff Trailer didn't have any spring football for his first year at UTSA. So they trot out there for their first game, and they maybe have a, a fifth, a fourth of the playbook like implemented like mm. with actual physical reps because uh, of COVID. So just having that extended amount of time with the team to really not only learn the playbook, but also implement a culture too, right? Because like they had Zoom meetings and stuff like that, but, you know, it's just not the same as, you know, being able to grab a face mask and, and yell at right. someone or, you know, give them a pat on the back, whatever it might be. Right. Um, second of all, I would say that UTSA made a huge commitment to competing for a championship this year by finding the money to pay for super senior tuition dollars for I think like 12 super seniors or something like that. And a lot of guys that they brought back are not all conference talents. I mean, they brought back um, like the backup fullback. Oh, I guess he would probably be the starting fullback, but he doesn't play all that much. You right. know, the second string offensive guard, second string tackle. And I mean, they just brought back as many guys as they could, essentially displacing what would be walk-ons. So the depth this year for UTSA has been insane where, you know, they have, they've only had the starting five offensive linemen for one game this year, but because they have all these super seniors back, there hasn't been that much of a drop-off. You know, obviously they're not quite at the peak of what they could accomplish up front, but the depth, not only on the offensive line, but in, in many different positions, has made this team a lot more resilient and just a lot tougher of an out because they have that experience coming back with guys that are bought into the culture and, and know the system and all that. But third, and probably most important, is that Frank Harris is a different quarterback this year than he's ever been in his career. And yeah. some of the throws that we've seen him make this year are just not throws that even even myself, who has been a longtime like believer in Frank, you know, because a lot of colleges wanted him as an athlete coming out of high school. They didn't think he had the arm to play at the next level. And like I always believed that he was a good enough passer, right. uh, but he's making some elite throws this year that are just kind of eye popping, right? So I would say those three things all have some varying degree of, of influence on UTSA having such a special season this year. And very quick quickly hitting on, you know, Frank Harris, you know, we just talked earlier, this is gonna be UAB's first chance in actually facing off against Frank Harris, you know. So I'm excited. I know the the guys are excited, the coaching staff's excited, and I bet Frank Harris is excited to finally get out there and play the Blazers. Yeah, I, my jaw dropped when you told me that. I, I, I didn't put two and two together. It's 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 so wild. But, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. You know, Frank had maybe his worst game at UTSA last week against Southern Miss. Um, I don't yeah, know. threw a couple if, picks, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys went into it on, on the preview uh, for UTSA or not. But, essentially, Southern Miss, like, ran, like, a, 
uh, <laughs> a park the bus offense. So they just like ate up a ton of time. And I, I think Frank was kind of scrambled and wasn't prepared for that kind of pace or, or tempo. Uh, he kind of rushed a couple of throws and just he didn't look his normal self. Right. But historically, he's bounced back really strongly from poor performances. And I, I would even go so far as to say he's probably played his best games against the better defenses that he's seen this year, uh, which doesn't really make sense at the surface level. But I think maybe it's because he just he, he plays the system a little bit more against good defenses um, and trust his reads a little bit more than like trying to make like a Superman play um, against a bad defense. So that's probably the main thing I'm, I'm watching for UTSA is like, you know, how, how does Frank Harris perform in like a, um, what essentially amounts to a playoff scenario for, for a championship game. And like, is he going to trust the offense or is he going to try to break off and just kind of run his own, run his own offense of his own uh, volition. And, and, you know, talking about Frank Harris, too, would you say that he has a weakness or, or, or would his weakness, I guess, you know, going to what you alluded to earlier, would his weakness be maybe not having enough patience, like going back to that Southern Miss game? Or what would you say would be his weakness that maybe UAB can try to exploit maybe this Saturday? I think it's it's all mental. I think okay. um, he can get rattled a little bit, you know, it, when he's not playing as well as he knows that he's capable of. Um he used to have a really bad tendency to bail out of the pocket too early. He's uh, fixed that quite a bit this year, I would say, but um, it's really just mental stuff. You know, I think his arm has come a long way. Like, you know, he, he misses passes here and there as, as does any quarterback in college football, you know, but I think the main thing is if you can get inside of his head a little bit and get him rattled, I think that uh, can really take the sales out of this UTSA offense for sure. And, uh, you know, if you guys, if, if you're listening now and you haven't checked out uh, Jared's podcast uh, with Adrian, the Alamo Dome Audible, definitely go give them a listen. They just dropped their uh, Southern Miss recap slash uh, UAB preview episode. Great stuff. And, and Jared, you know, not to spoil, I'm not going to spoil all of it, but in that episode, you did mention that there was a, a defense alignment for Southern Miss that was able to kind of get in the backfield and rattle Harris a little bit. Um, would, would you would you attribute that to just Southern Miss having a decent D line or, or did the offensive line kind of struggle a little bit last Saturday? I think it's a bit of both. I think that Southern Miss defensive front, you know, statistically they have been pretty good this year and yeah. they didn't really get the credit they deserve because the team as a whole has been so bad, but their offense has just got awful, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think going to that stall out offense gave the defense time to recuperate in the sideline between series. And that really helped them shine through a little bit. Um, so, you know, I don't think it was like embarrassing that Southern Miss was able to get some pressure on Frank Harris. Cause I thought they were pretty good athletes over there. Yeah. But the other part of it, too, and I don't know if I've ever seen this happen before, but one of UTSA's starting tackles, like, got hurt during pregame warmups. Hmm. And so, you know, literally they're, like, out there lined up with the starting ones, like, going through walkthroughs before the game. Right. Uh, and that, those are not the starting ones that start the game because Mackay Hart got somehow injured himself uh, in his warmups. So, you know, I think that shuffled things a little bit. And, you know, they were, were able to recover. They have a good backup, uh, Jalen Galmore, who's, uh, I think, a six-year senior who will be probably be starting for UTSA this week. Uh, but it, it just kind of shuffled things a little bit and it maybe hurt the communication piece a bit as far as, like, exchanging uh, on the blitzes and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall, UTSA's offense has been really, really good about uh, preventing pressure and then avoiding pressure for sacks from Frank Harris once they do get into the backfield. Because because I was going to say now, Jared, you know, UAB's defensive line is oh, yeah. a, a lot better than that Southern Miss defensive oh, yeah. line oh, yeah. last week. Man, so. that Alex Wright, Spencer Buford Woo! matchup is going to be one to watch. That's yeah. uh, Again, we don't really have top-level elite NFL talent matchup mono a mono in Conference USA all that often. So, you know, it's a shame that that's not being, you know, uh, showcased on a national televised uh, broadcast, but, you know, uh, I'm not Judy McLeod, man. I can't speak to that. <laughs> we'll leave it yeah. I guess it's not. Uh, it's a good thing though that it's not going to be uh, streamed on MySpace or something like that. So I guess I guess we'll take ESPN Plus. Yeah, I'll take ESPN Plus over Facebook. <laughs> RBN Sports or something like that. <laughs> RIP. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jared, let's. We've got to talk about Sincere McCormick. I mean, best running back in the conference. Um, what has he, what have you seen this year that maybe Sincere has improved on um, from the past couple of years? I, I, I swear, you know, me and Steve just talked about this. Uh, uh, I swear he's on like his 10th year at UTSA, it feels like. Um, <laughs> I think he's but, got two more left, honestly. Oh, you're kidding, it's right? Crazy. <laughs> oh, golly. But I, I, what have you seen, you know, because his stats already 1,100 yards. I mean, ha- has he improved um, 
on maybe some aspects that maybe he was, you know, not as good at the last couple years mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to evaluate sincere this season because early in the year, I, I was starting to get the sense that he was having kind of a disappointing season and that he was he was a good running back, but he wasn't quite as explosive. Mm -hmm. But then that started to change once UTSA got into conference play. And he really started breaking tackles more often. And I think part of that, too, is you give credit to Frank Harris because defenses yeah. finally uh, you know, started playing cover two defenses again against UTSA, which they hadn't done um, for a while uh, since Sincere was so good. Um, but I think that he really improved in the passing game is where I've seen the biggest improvement. You know, uh, not only coming out of the backfield and catching balls and, and making people miss in open space, but also uh, as a pass protector, I think he's gotten a lot better. You know, he's not the biggest guy, you know, um, he's like Devontae Price at FIU, like probably yeah. just dwarfs him uh, same way with Dwayne McBride. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Sincere has done a good job of like keeping good pad level when guys do get into the backfield and he has to pick up that blitzer. He's done a good job of like keeping them off of Frank. But I think as far as breaking tackles and just being elusive, we maybe throughout the whole course of the season, he has taken a step back in that apartment. Uh, but the bye week really helped him. He looked a lot more explosive um, against UTEP and uh, and Southern Miss. Uh, Rice game, he broke off like an 80-yard touchdown too. So uh, yeah. he's definitely improved in that sense. So he, he should be you know as good as ever against UAB this week. And, and you look at the stats, too. I mean, 230 carries. And, I mean, the next guy, the running back, is with 38 carries. I mean, of course, Frank, you know, is 70. But that's, you know, with yeah. sacks and everything, too. But, my goodness, they're not afraid to feed him, what, 30 times a game. And I think the the Memphis game, you know, that you got to go to at the Liberty Bowl earlier in the season, didn't they feed him, like, 40 times? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they golly. did. Golly. I think it was the most carries in a single game by a running back for, like, the past four years or something crazy like that. Golly. So, I mean, I, I, it's safe to say, you know, that this offense really does go through Frank Harris and Cecilia McCormick, um, mm -hmm. for sure, for Blazer fans listening. Um, and let's talk about some of those wide receivers that UTSA has. And, and, you know, Steve and I were talking that, you know, I mean, you guys might have the best wide receiver core uh, a group in Conference USA. You know, yeah, you look so. at uh, Zachary Franklin, uh, Cephas. Uh, Clark, um, just just talk a little bit about those guys and what UAB fans can expect to see this Saturday. Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome group. I, I you know, before the season, I was thinking, oh, you know, UTC has a chance to be the top receiver unit in the in the conference, but I think they definitely solidified that. Uh, yeah. You know, all, all due respect to Western Kentucky, but you can't even really compare those two offenses. You know. No. Um, Zakari Franklin is definitely the standout. He's the guy that's probably most likely to be in the NFL soon. Um, just a very smooth route runner. You know, he's he's really fast, but it's not his speed that gets you. It's his ability to get in and out of his cuts. Um, sometimes it looks like he's doing a basketball crossover when, mm. you know, he, when he's like squared up with a defensive back. He had a great touchdown against UTEP. If you go back and you see that one, he like flows his whole body, you know, like <laughs> in a very fluid motion. And then boom, you know, he's open by like five yards with like very little time between uh, those two movements. Um, so he's definitely a big one to watch there. Uh, Josh Cephas made the move to slot receiver this year. Mm. And that was one I was like kind of surprised by because he's like six foot three, you know, yeah. he's not, not a prototypical slot receiver, but he's just so good at running the quick slant and UTSA is just hitting up, hitting, hitting him on that, on the slant route. And then when he gets out on the boundary, um, he's really improved as far as his ability to get yardage after the catch this year. So that's been a huge part of UTSA's offense. In fact, he had a 50-yard uh, touchdown against Southern Miss where he literally caught like a smoke screen and broke one tackle and took it to the house. Um, but then the new guy who's kind of emerged this year is uh, JT or DeCorian Clark. Uh, that was a guy I was super high on coming out of high school just from his athletic ability. You know, I think he got a late offer from Baylor, if I remember correctly. Um, but not really a guy who had as much like recruiting noise behind him as you would expect. But he was just an incredible athlete. You know, he's a, a rock solid, like six foot two, just extremely um, athletic and muscular. But he finally put it all together from a mechanic standpoint. You know, he, he worked really hard over the all season to kind of become a more natural pass catcher. And between those three, the three of those guys, I mean, you might be talking like one or two drop passes for the entire 10 game season UTSA's played so far. So it's just a really special unit and probably not one UTSA will be able to match for a really long time.
And it's just crazy to think, you know, you go back a couple of years, you know, under Frank Wilson, where you saw those wide receivers drop a lot of balls and just the offense just looks so inept. And yeah. to what they're doing this year and in last year, too, but definitely this year under Jeff Trailer, just man, he trailers really got, you know, that going with the Roadrunners on the offensive side of the ball. But I do want to talk about has anybody this year that you've seen really gone heavy into playing just one-on-one man defense with those wide receivers. Um, did UTEP do that, or was that more of a zone that UTEP ran? You know. Because I, all I remember from the UTEP game is just slant after slant yeah. after slant. Yeah. And I'm like, my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it's been a mix. I mean, there have been times this season where I noticed that the opposing defense was lined up in man cover one or, or man cover zero. And like yeah. I saw Zachary Franklin lined up out there and I was just like, oh, that's a touchdown. <laughs> like, yeah. There was a play against losing a tech that was like that. UT is like on the 15 yard line. And, you know, there's just one cornerback and press coverage against Zakari with no safety there. And like, I, I literally just called it out to my friends. So like, hey, Zakari scoring on this play. And three seconds later, you know, he's throwing up the <laughs> touchdown sign. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if UTSA has faced like one type of coverage more than the other. I, I think they've done a good job of getting open against both. Um, they've probably struggled a little bit more against zones, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's they're a really good unit, and the tight ends are starting to get involved in the passing game a little bit too. Uh, oh, yeah, Cardenas as, is Cardenas is good. Yeah, he's coming along. You know, I went on the at the Roost podcast uh, before before the season. I'm sure you guys have probably collaborated with them as well. And yeah. they asked me uh, who's a dark horse guy at UTSA to to be an all conference player, and I said Oscar Cardenas, and they were like the backup tight end. And I was like, yeah, buddy, watch him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, he caught, I think he caught a touchdown against. Uh, I can't remember now, but he should have had another one against Southern Miss last week as well. He just dropped right on the end zone there. But, yeah, it's a pretty good unit. And they're just, like, huge 275-pound tight ends that just find a way to get open in space. And, then, you know, they're, t- they're probably going to run over a couple of guys once they capture the ball. So they're they're a fun group to watch as well. Definitely. Hey, well, we know a little bit about good tight ends, too. So. That's right. <laughs> I know. That's, that's the model, really. Like, I I think you just need to get away from these huge tight ends and go more of that Garrett Prince route. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, Jared, um, obviously, if you're, UA, if, if you're UAB on the defensive side of the ball and trying to stop this electric offense of the Roadrunners, I mean, you would think you have to commit some guys to the box to stop Sincere McCormick because if Sincere gets going, I mean, it's, it's pretty much game over. So what, what do you foresee UAB trying to do this Saturday afternoon? I mean, obviously, you know, you have to stop that run, but still you got to deal with those elite wide receivers. So what, 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 what do you think UAB should try to do this Saturday? I think they should definitely only play with one high safety. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you know, Frank Harris isn't like a Peyton Manning, you know, pure pocket passer ripping 40, 50 yard throws on the regular, but he's accurate enough in that mid range where when teams have played that two high safety, he's just constantly just shredding them underneath routes, underneath routes. And, and you just, mm. receivers are good enough to pick up that yardage after, after the play. So I think really the main thing is, you know, can load, load the box a little bit and just make sure that sincere, uh, isn't getting gifted huge runs, right? Like, right. He hasn't like really broken out of like loaded boxes too often. Um, but he's done a good job when the two safeties are high and, you know, Frank Harris, I think, excels at hitting those kind of medium range routes. So that's the defensive lineman I would go with if I was UAB and just try to force that turnover. Right. Like mm-hmm. you just done a good job avoiding this year. Uh, but the turnovers that they have committed have been particularly egregious. Right. So if you can yeah. get one of those, then uh, that could really change the play of the game for sure. And, and, you know, talking about, you know, Frank Harris, what you mentioned earlier about just kind of taking what the defense gives you. I mean, that that just shows his maturity, you know, that mm-hmm. he's he has. And just kudos to the coaching staff, you know, with Trailer and, and the offensive coordinator, too, just teaching Harris. So I'm definitely looking forward to that matchup. I'm on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Jared, can you tell uh, UAB fans just a couple of guys to – maybe look out for i mean i know those big nasties up front you know that we mentioned yeah. <laughs> but uh but what, what's some other uh couple guys that you have fan should uh maybe look out for this saturday yeah so i don't think that he's going to be uh able to play this week because he is dealing with a, a hand or, or a wrist injury but Tariq woolen uh, is a six foot four cornerback that really came on strong for utsa this year uh he moved over from wide receiver to cornerback under frank wilson but really just started to blossom under trailers coaching staff and uh he's a guy that i probably i think will probably go in somewhere in the two to five round range in the nfl draft 
So if he's healthy and he's able to play, um, he'll definitely be lined up on Shropshire. So that'll be fun to watch. Clarence Hicks is an outside linebacker that took a big step forward in his super senior season. You know, it's not that he's like really tearing up the stat sheet and, you know, just making play after play after play. But the plays that he has made have felt like they've all determined the outcome of the game. You know, mm-hmm. he's been really good at forcing turnovers, uh, like coming in on a sack and just knocking the ball at the quarterback's hand. He had a game-winning interception against Western Kentucky as well. But, um, you know, big guy like that, drop back in coverage and make a diving catch to win a game. Like, that, that was crazy wow. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the listeners are probably familiar with Rashad Wisdom, UTSA mm-hmm. strong safety, who's continued to play really well this year. Uh, but Trevor Harmonson is an uh, interior linebacker who's been really solid for UTSA and probably doesn't get as much attention as he deserves. Um just a lot of guys I could go through on the defensive line, but those, I think those are some of the ones that, uh, you know, more fans might not be as familiar with that have played really well for you to say. And, and what about special teams wise? Are, are, are still got a good punter? <laughs> yeah. Lucas Dean, incredible punter. He hasn't had as much reps this year because UTSA hasn't needed to punt as much yeah. as they had in, in previous seasons. Uh, but, you know, the offense did stumble a bit against Southern Miss. And sure enough, Lucas Dean came out there and I think he had two punts that were down within the 10 yard line. So he still got it. You know, not not too much rust sitting on the bench for him this year. Um, and then Hunter to plus as the place kicker has been really great. You know, he has missed a couple of, uh, of field goals that he should have made this year. But, you know, compared to your average kicker, he's he's a big plus to this team. And you just has been really good in, in coverage as well. And special yeah. teams. So in um, and, and, and places too, Jared. I mean, he's clutch. He hit that game winning field goal against Memphis. So he's true. he's clutch. That's true. Yeah, not not the biggest leg in the conference, but he's very dependable for sure. Nice. Well, Jared, it's been a pleasure as always. Um, guys, if you are not following uh, Jared on Twitter, make sure and give him a follow at Jared UTSA. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, he does a great job on his podcast with Adrian, the Alamo Dome Audible. You can find the Alamo Dome Audible on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you find the Blazer Victory Podcast. Definitely go get their uh, preview, UAB preview and Southern Miss recap episode to listen. And I'm sure next week they will have a recap of the UAB game and preview in who do y'all have next week? North Texas. Oh, you don't even have to do an episode. <laughs> man, can, OK, but think of this, man. Think of this. UTSA wins this week. They have the West locked up. The game is essentially meaningless for UTSA other than getting that perfect record. Mm-hmm. But UNT is playing for bowl eligibility. Oh. Seth Lachelle's seat hot. Oh. Ah, you know, like, this has happened before. Both teams have upset each other in games that they had no business, you know, really competing. So, Ooh. I don't know, man. I, I think it could be one to watch. I, I'm, not, I'm not throwing it out with the bathwater yet. There you go. Well, make sure, guys, you know, you're also following the Alamo Dome Audible on Twitter at Alamo Audible. Uh, but Jared, thanks again. And guys, we'll be Steve and I will be back in just a couple of days following the UTSA game to give you guys a recap episode about what happens down in San Antonio. But Jared, thanks again, man. It's a pleasure as always. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure. Uh, every time I come on, I have a great time. I'm looking forward to a, a legendary uh, end of conference USA contest this year. So thanks for having me on, man. Cannot wait. All right, guys, we'll be back in a few days. Go Blazers.